Welcome back to another episode of the RTS Podcast. I am your host, Zion Smith. On this RTS Podcast, I have a special guest with me. This special guest was my first roommate at OVU. He's a psychology major, he's a music artist, and he's my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, my brother, Dutch. What's good, man? What's good, brother? How you doing? I'm doing it all, boy. Man, it's a pleasure to be on the RTS podcast with my dog, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. Along the way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This was a long time coming, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we get into this RCS podcast, I, I want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to be on this RCS podcast with me and a chance for us to have an you know, authentic conversation, just you know, just talk about life, you know. Uh, I appreciate you for bringing me on to be able to, you know, share a little bit of my story and to talk to you about yours and uh, just. Gotta jump into it, you know. Right, right. Good to see you, man. It's, it's, it's good to be here. Man. That, that's that's what it's all about, you know, helping yeah. one another. Uh, so to begin this art test podcast, I, I want you to tell me about how you got into music. Well, really, man. Like when it comes to music, it's really been something that's been a part of my life since I, sure, since as long as I can remember. Like even my pops, he used to rap. Him and all his brothers and my uncles, they used to make little CDs and shit. And um, just recording together and have all of that played out. So like, it was always something. Like, we used to freestyle in car with pops. For real? Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah, we used to freestyle. Shoot, I used to rap battle funny stories in seventh, <laughs> seventh grade. Uh-huh. Um, usually, you know, people come in on the bus and stuff. And um, they'd be like 30 minutes or something before everybody head into the building, go to their first block, or they'd be at home in classes or whatever. And it was, it was another dude named Devin. He used to be rapping stuff too. He was like a grade or older than me. So I was in the seventh, he was in the eighth. Mm-hmm. So we get to the um nine, nah, I was in six. Actually, I was in six. <laughs> he was in six and what's the name? He was seven because my big brother was still in school. He was in eight. Mm-hmm. So we pull up, we get off the bus and everything. And um everybody like rap battle, rap battle, woo woo. Yeah. Everybody start like, rapping around <laughs> and stuff. He like, ain't nobody gonna rap battle. I'm like, somebody bro, I got that, bro. What's up? <laughs> Up, we rap battling, bro, and basically, bro, to get it just as I don't even remember what I said, bro, but it was like it was some of his older brother, bro, and then like, woo, woo, I just I killed him, bro. I can't even give it to you. <laughs> you ain't trying to get canceled, man. 2024, you ain't trying to get canceled, but you no, know, I gave it to that boy. Yeah. I said a lot of mean things to him, but we just, I still my dog, but it was cool, but okay. I, I had to kill him and get him up out the way, and yeah, so like, I really just like it's been something that's been a part of me my whole life, bro. like, it's just natural. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The music, it was just inevitable for it to happen. Like, mm-hmm. I, I would drop my first song, my first song on my 15th birthday, my first solo song. And that's because my pops, he came through on the studio for me and stuff. But before that, I was writing stuff in my notes, having the voice in the and stuff like that. I remember us talking about your first song when you dropped it on your 15th birthday and then our freshman year, and he was telling me about how special it was for you, especially that it was your 15th birthday, December 18th. Good man, it's man. Them boys, man. <laughs> and then, being my first song too, mm-hmm. that don't run, but I was a blaze too. Like, so that's how I knew, I was like, bro, I just dropped a song on some slight stuff, bro, like, on some mm-hmm. birthday stuff. People loved it too, so like, it's like, I already knew it was up from there, you feel me? I just gotta get people to see that song. So, so when you dropped your first song on your 15th birthday and you knew that it was up from there, uh, did you have the motivation to, whereas you you want to go big and you, you know do, do this consistently? And now that's a crazy thing, bro. Because like in my mind, I always wanted to go big, mm-hmm. but I've been telling my brother all the time that like, I know now I was never ready to go big. You feel me? Funny enough, even though I dropped my first song on my 15th birthday, mm-hmm. I really I didn't drop a whole other song until my 16th birthday. And then after that, I ain't done a whole nother song until my 17th birthday. Wow, so, so like, so, so that been two years. I don't want to say the whole time I'm mm-hmm. recording <clears throat> hella music though. And then like, I'm just not dropping for it. But I just like, I knew I had 
what I got because I'm, I'm recording regardless. So, so you have plenty of music in the vault. You, you just yeah. never drop it because of circumstances and yeah, just you, like just like, like I wasn't going on too. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't ready to drop it. Or like they was like unfinished and just stuff like that. Uh -huh. But yeah, I like those times. I was like, I'm going whole year without drop. It wasn't even until my 17th birthday. I started dropping a little bit more. But okay. I still okay. wouldn't even put pressure on them like that. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I just was starting to not drop once again. You feel me? Yeah. So like, yeah. I already, even though I'm ready to go big, bro, it's just like I've been I've been like throughout these years, bro, because I've been rapping for a little minute now. You feel me? It's like dropping <clears> since 15, but I've been doing it, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's just like I've been trying to hit them with something consistent more recent. But I'm really just giving them what, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of let it be natural. But people be forcing it. They be doing like the TikTok stuff, bro. I just gave it to them natural, bro. Right, right. When I'm when I'm in that mood to just put my keep putting my foot on their neck, it go in and out. No, I, and, and I believe in the nationality. You, you have to you have to stand up. You, you know, find, find your own self, find your sound, the, the, yeah. the music. And if if you don't have that, then you're gonna imitate off someone else, and, and you don't you don't want that because people can see all that. You know? Exactly. Like a lot of people out here these days, it's like, and ain't and ain't no power for them, bro. Because I want everybody to make money. I want everybody to win. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, they just don't really like. They don't make music for themselves. They make music for the enemies. You feel me? And that's okay for them because that's just a way for them to make money. You feel me? But mm -hmm. that's just for them, bro. But that don't. For some people, that ain't gonna work. Some people make authentic stuff. So that's just right. everybody got their own crowd, bro. But right. I appreciate right. everybody getting some money, especially. You know what I'm saying? If they want some black brothers, you feel me? We all gotta be in this shit together. Regardless if I fuck with it or not, I'm still gonna support everybody. And absolutely, especially from a black man to another black man, this is hard out here. Uh, yeah, it's life hard. gets ten times harder every day. You have people out here who makes it twenty times harder for no reason. Uh, so, yeah. so we gotta help each other. We gotta be a village. We, we gotta be united. I don't see with all the uh, unnecessary, you know, beefing and, you know, like, bro, a lot of that shit don't be about that. Like, you ain't worried about that, bro. Especially, I'm not worried about it. Because if it's some real, if it's a real problem, bro, mm -hmm. you're going to get to it. So why are we, why are we not doing that, bro? Let's support everybody. We're pushing, bro. That's the move, that's the move I'm coming on, bro. You feel me? Right, right. Just pushing everybody. You feel me? See, I, I be on Facebook and Instagram only to find motivation and inspiration. And, and when I do that, like for example, last night, I, I'm on Instagram and I see one of my friends from high school, he, he's living in Texas now. Yeah. Well, he be going to the gym like almost every day, posting on workout videos. Yeah. Man, he, he working on leg workouts, like quads and hamstrings and calves. And, and, and I, I comment on his video, I'm like, Every time I see your workouts, you, you make me want to go even harder. Like, I, I'm, I'm seeing another black man it's just trying to bro. better himself, so it, it makes me better, you know? A lot of people, they can't see that. They see other people doing well, and they hate. Mm -hmm. That's just how some people's wired, bro, but real niggas ain't wired like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Real yeah. niggas wired for everybody to keep pushing, bro, keep going, bro. You take, you don't take away from it. You take from it, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Take it away as you putting that shit down. You take from it, you taking that, putting it into yourself, bro. Pushing yourself up, bro. Like, learn from somebody. And get inspired from somebody. Exactly. Like, don't be fucking taking away from it all that. that oh, he ain't worth that, though. That shit ain't even for real. Like, he only got money like that. You know, people be saying all types, though, bro. That shit ain't about nothing, bro. Like, Amen. Amen. It's all about that. So, so speaking of the inspiration, is there a music artist out there who will inspire you to make music from when you was 15. I mean, as far as inspiration, when it comes to music, I feel like when it, whenever I hop in the studio and make a song, mm -hmm. like it comes from like like a un, let me say an unnatural place. It's natural, but an unnatural place in the sense that everybody can't do it the way I do it. I just let it flow out. Okay. So like, as far as inspiration, it's not like someone I can reach to like oh. I'm mean, heavily inspired by this artist, and I like my life for this because it just just comes out of me. Mm -hmm. But I feel like my inspirations is, you know, a collection of everything I listen to. Like, you know, my mom, my mother being Puerto Rican, I've been listening to Spanish music my whole life. Like, I feel like it's elements that I take from Spanish music. My pops, you know what I'm saying? 
his pops died when he was 12, but he had a Jamaican man that was with my grandma. So we listened to hella Jamaican music. We got a cultural issue with them. But then I also listen to other shit too. Like it's hella like oldies and even the newer rap songs. Yeah, I'm inspired by really like everything. But I don't really take from something and apply it. It's kind of just everything that I've been a part of and it comes out. So it's me, but it's everything that's together. I, I respect that it's, it's in you, you know, and you, you cannot, no, no matter how popular you become, you, you cannot forget, and I don't care who you are, you, yeah. you cannot forget where you came from. And let, and let me not say unnatural, let me say supernatural, you feel me? Okay. Because it's, it's a power, you feel me? It's, it's just like, it just, it just flow out of me, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, when, we, when we come to inspiration, if I want to give you some names of what I've listened to, I can't say like, I applied their music. I can't think of like, oh, I need this artist and he will inspired me to do this song. If we talking about like people I listen to, that probably subconsciously inspired me, you feel me? Mm-hmm. To just kind of like flow out of me, bro. I listened to a lot of Romeo Santos from when I was younger. Listen to a lot of Batman. Like, hello, Lil Wayne growing up. Like, <laughs> shit, pop tactics and Lil Wayne, hello, bro. Like, all the time, bro. Duffel Bag Boy, all of that shit. Mm-hmm. Then fuck with Lil Wayne, like, I probably even fuck around and say I would fucking get inspired by the Temptations. <laughs> <laughs> but then Christmas album, Temptations to every Christmas, bro. Like, I'm really, like, I really enjoy music. I can even fuck with country, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I got uncles that fuck with country, but I fuck with country, bro. Nigga. If y'all listen to this, bro, <laughs> Alan Jackson, Papa Top, bro. That's a country song, bro. I, I listen to everything, bro. Like, I get inspired from everything. Tell me more about Romeo Santos. Hmm. Romeo Santos? He, yeah. Part, he was part yeah. of the group. It's, it's a, he's a part of the group, but he also did solo music. But he's a he's a Hispanic artist. He's from he's from the Bronx. So mm-hmm. If y'all know, y'all know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I talk about my buddy for people out there that's tapping them, bro. Even oh, like yeah. big. If we talking about more, you know, Hispanic artists, you know, he was talking Daddy Yankee and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people know about Daddy Yankee. Mark Anthony, a big one. Like it's a lot of them. You feel me? They all just this good music. I appreciate good music. You feel me? If we talking about some more rap shit, like. I listen to Hella Chief Keith, you feel me? Chief Keith is my guy, bro, but yeah, bro. Check things together, bro, because I can go from there. I can go from a goddamn Alan Jackson to a goddamn Romeo Santos to a goddamn Chief Keith to a goddamn Woo Woo. Oh, yeah. but I will say, when we're talking about inspiration, though, one person, maybe not, like, probably music too, but like, as far as like, just everything he's doing, I gotta say, Soulja Boy is a big inspiration. Like, as far as he got hella businesses, he do the music, he got his own label, like he do hella shit, bro. And that's kind of what I want to, I want to be able to just be in so much different shit, not just one thing. That's why I'm even going to school doing this shit too. So I, I, I think, I think Soulja Boy, when he came out, he revolutionized yeah, yeah. how music artists find their own sound. You know, when, when I heard that, yo, and it was Super turn man come. <laughs> yeah, I was 16, yeah, I was 16 too. So I was crazy. I'm like, damn, I was 16. Turning up, bro. Like, yeah. I, had whole, I had the whole world. He just stayed consistent, bro. Like, mm-hmm. nigga, like 30, and he's still relevant off of just being able to not only do the music, but adjust the music, but also, nigga, here's a game console. Nigga, here's a phone. Here's a this. Here's, right. here's, here's a big right. TV show. <laughs> here's a movie. Like, here's, here's clothing. Like, you feel me? Like, he relevant because he stayed all these aspects, that's what I'm trying to do. Like, it's a little different, but like, I'm trying to like, not only am I trying to do music, eventually I'm fucking around and start streaming this shit. Not consistently, because I don't want to be like a streamer, mm-hmm. but I would like my stream once a week or something, you feel me? Like I'm going to do YouTube shit with the guys, fucking, I want to do hella shit, bro. So it's, it's, it's hella exciting, bro. Like, that inspiration, bro, like that's why I say, I can't even say like I'm inspired by something because I take inspiration in all aspects, bro. Like, I might be inspired by artists, it's about something they did business wise or something. You feel me? It's just it's, I take everything. I, I I I respect that. I, I respect the, the cultural aspect and, and, and your background, your 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 mom being Puerto Rican. I would say the, the part. Um, my father is black. And he's from New Jersey, but my mom is Puerto Rican and also a group of Puerto Rican. The indigenous people in Puerto Rico, the native like Native American people, they're Taino. So Taino is like my indigenous culture. So it's, but I like, the craziest thing is though, I would say, like, anytime you tell people Hispanic, the first on back assumption is Mexican. That's what they love saying. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, Lashine is not Mexican. 
<laughs> I fuck Mexican people though. Hey, shout, shout out to my head standards out there, for real. We, we salute you. <laughs> Me. Uh, uh, another question that I, I'm curious to know from you is what makes your music unique from others? Uh, and, and, and the reason why I ask that is because I know you have a unique sound and I, I appreciate it. Uh, your your, your high-pitched vocals, it's, it's something that's unique and, and, and it's something I don't know when you hear from other artists, so, so tell me more about that. When it, when it comes to uniqueness of my sound, I feel like what really makes me so unique is the fact that I have such a variety and range of what I can do on the track, mm -hmm. as far as sonically, but when I'm telling you, what I'm talking to you about is always authentic to me, and there's only one me, you know what I mean? So like, I'm telling you my story, like, you know what I'm saying, I fucking, I live in Spain, I live in Okinawa, my little brother was born in Spain, I got family, Jersey, my mom and family in Connecticut, Puerto Rico, all this shit. Like, yeah, I, I just tell yeah. you my story, bro. Like, lost my dog, bro. Like, mm -hmm. my brother, you know, I just like, I just tell them me, and ain't nobody can tell my story more than me. Like, I got, you know what I'm saying, certified geek. That motherfucker on all platforms, y'all go ahead and tap in. <laughs> <laughs> that song on there, I'm talking, I'm talking my shit on there. I'm like, bro, like, I literally said, how the fuck my little brother born in Spain, bitch? Like, niggas don't know that. Like, how? My little brother born in Spain, did he American citizen? Niggas can't say that, bro. Like, I've been around the world, bro. Like, I'm telling my story, but then I'm also, like I said, the variety of range, I'm giving it to you sonically different ways. I can give you the goddamn a little bit more higher pitch. I might hold the note or some more singing shit. I might fuck around and rap that shit. See, I can rap it to you different ways. So I can fucking snap on your ass. I can hop on any type of beat. I think I fuck with everything. I hop on fucking. Louisiana, Bat Rouge type beat. So, you know, <laughs> I love this. I hop on that man. Shout out to my brother Yokio. He go crazy with the beats. He got his own sound. He do so much shit. Like I hop on that man. I love plug shit. Like I hop on anything, bro. Like anything, bro. I give a variety to you, but what makes it unique is this beat. You know, what makes it unique is this beat. Niggas can't tell the beat story. But, but, but I also think what will make sure you mean is, like you said, if you have range, you have variety, you, you can use beats and have multiple flows. Oh, yeah. like, 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 like you said, if you have the average vocals, you, you have the, the, the same. You know, if, if you wanna, man, Go crazy and and, 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 and and talk crazy. You you, you got the bad and bullish beats. That, that's one of the things that I, I, I like about you as your artist. You, you you have diversity. You yeah, know, yeah. so I'm gonna get in everybody like everybody suck. Cause at the end of the day, my whole point of my music is just to make something that I enjoy and also get like just express my story out there, bro, mm -hmm. in a way that people can enjoy. You feel me? So like. If you're not a fan of like singing shit, and you like, bro, I want to hear some turn shit. Well, I got some turn shit to me saying <laughs> shit. I can sing and rap the same. Like, I can tell you, nigga, what I'm doing it in two different ways, three different ways, four different ways. Mm -hmm. But it's just what you want to hear. But I, I, I enjoy the sonic aspect of music because it's about the frequencies. What's touching your brain? I'm trying to massage the motherfucking brain with music. That shit sounds good with music. But then also, it's me though. You feel me? Mm -hmm. These people out here, a lot of people, they don't tell them, bro. Like, they be on the, the beat just lying, bro. Like, trying to rap like this sound like, oh, I'm the dude with the biggest stick. I'm shooting shit up. Like, ooh, ooh. like you're not doing nothing. Right, you know right. That's... My nigga, I'm in college. I'm also spending my own business. I'm also got my own, uh, I got my own business that I'm making money off of, bro. And I got my own music shit. Like, I'm telling you what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you the next nigga doing, bro. I'm not acting like the next nigga. I'm acting like me. And that's certified, bro. That's why I'm always being certified. That's why I dropped this certified. I'm <laughs> telling niggas I'm certified. Like, I'm me at the end of the day. I don't gotta act like another nigga. These niggas be sold. That's why they try to act like, bro. I'm gonna put a gun in the video to know you hard, bro, to, know, to let you know I'm me. But nigga running this crib, they get blown the fuck down. God forbid. But I'm saying, like, that shit is not shit that people like to put on the net. We about fucking pushing each other and going up. Everybody's gonna be about going down. Oh, it's about to go down. Right. I'm tough. Right. Like, bro, you're not tough. Like, nigga, let's let's go up. You feel me? Hey, some, sometimes I, I actually speak louder than words. And, and what I mean by that is when, when it comes to 
the same actions speaking out of them words. You you see through people, and, and it, it, it brings us back to the, the music, the lyrics. When when you have a certain artist out there that's talking about, oh, I, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Oh, I, I'm, I'm gonna break his house. Yeah, like you, 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 you was not out there living that lifestyle. And even and even yeah. if let's say even if you're doing that. Like, bro, niggas are really doing that. He ain't coming goofy like that. Like, if you doing that, bro, you could rap like that. But I'm talking about these artists out here that's on the ground every day. Like, oh, they rapping that tough shit, and they trying to argue with niggas on Instagram. Like, but that shit's all, bro. That shit really is about that. You know, arguing that on Instagram. I feel like, bro, just be true to yourself, bro. And that's what, that's what matters. These niggas gonna be true to yourself. Like, bro, how you beef with a nigga you never met on the internet? Because both of y'all be a fake tough. That, like, that shit goofy as hell. Like, we all... Why can't everybody just go up, bro? That's because these niggas are not real, bro. Real niggas trying to rent it up, bro. You feel me? Because these niggas doing goofy stuff. I think it's because most of the times when that occurs, you have people that's trying to become popular. Yeah, attention, yeah. attention seeking, bro. They move like women. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. bro. And, and, and you, you, you got people that's also impatient. They, they're trying to get the bag and get it while they can. Every, Every fatness and, and it's, Burn yeah, yeah. it's it's unnatural. So so for you to have the intimacy and, and your music and you being true to yourself through your, your music, like, like for example, I I know you have a song when you was talking about your, your dog and, and and how he passed away, yeah. it, and, and, and and you you were saying how it, it tore. Talk about being like authentic, bro. Like I got songs, bro. If I'm in the studio, bro. I'm saying real shit, but I didn't cry most of the time making songs, bro. Like whether it be talking about my uncle, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That I lost the drugs or something. That could be anything, bro. But like this is real stuff. Like if you real, bro, that shit gonna do the hit. Like I really feel the shit I'm saying. You feel me? And I drop tears in the street. Like you feel me? People don't do that, bro. They they in the studio talking about something that's not them. That's not I, 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 uh, oh my God! Tell and I, I, I can't even I can't even get the words out because when, when, when you listen to a song that shows true vulnerability and emotions, and you can hear it when someone really mean what they say. Yeah, you, you you can hear the tone. You, you can hear how they are expressing themselves and putting out their emotions. And, and, and when you feel it, when, when you feel the goosebumps and inside you, when, when when you feel your heart pounding. That's true music, and, and we don't get that nowadays. We we, we don't exactly. get like, like this. It used to be music out there that makes you want to fall in love. Now you, you got you got people that's it, it, it's just it's goofy, like you say, and, and it's ridiculous. Tell me, bro, and that's that's really where we at now. You know what I'm saying when it comes to that, bro. Like authenticity, bro. Especially in this new age, bro, because social media is so big that where it's like everybody, you know, I'm a psychology major, bro. Like this is like your brain, you have to yourself, you have your goddamn presenting self, like the self that you present to the world, your right. goddamn self, and then how you perceive yourself, your perceived self, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully I didn't mess that up as far as you perceive self. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the base idea, bro, it's just like bro. People, when it comes to presenting self, bro, it was always, you know, throughout the years, bro, it's just like on a like day to day level, like you outside, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Now with social media, people are so busy trying to keep up with what the image they're trying to present. Like they're trying to post pictures, they're trying to post money every day or spend money to try to find the newest thing to keep right. up with this image that's not even done. And, and that's they just also try to work. When, when they on social media, they also wasting their time trying to impress people. Exactly. And, they, and the thing is, when you're presenting self and your perceived self don't match up, it eats you up inside. Yeah. So when someone attacks this fake persona you got, the persona that you're presenting, that's why people lash out. That's why everybody, oh, what you say, I ain't this, woo, because they try to present they that and they're not that. So when you compromise that and they feel that cognitive dissonance, you know what I'm saying, in their brain, like, yo, I'm not what I say I am. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the cognitive when they feel that, they lash out, bro. It's like, bro, you wouldn't have to feel that. If you match up your perceived self with your presented self, if you be true to yourself, if you talk really what you are and let it know how you be, you won't have that problem, bro. And that's why 
I'm unbothered by anything, bro. Like, I'll never, you won't ever see me turn up, getting heated, getting mad about nothing unless it's about a real problem, bro. Like, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm good with myself, bro. Like, bro, I'm chilling, bro. Because I know ain't nobody going to do that to me, and I'm living good. So what am I Get my energy up over something like that. Right? You know, funny enough, I was at a barbershop talk for the brother to brother. Uh, also, OBU have promotions is there. OBU Women Gender and Equity Center was also there too, and there was a panel, and that they also one of the uh, statements that they spoke about was defining who you are. 